You only think about yourself, Celine. You're liable to get us all killed. Ugh, stop being a kitten and grow a pair already, Noreen. Commander Zorov stood, his arms folded, while Noreen, the calico catwoman, and Celine, the slick-skinned aquatic Vidalkin, shouted lamentations and curses at one another. Simmer down! I don't intend to split the bounty. This ship and my crew are more than enough to take down that sick bastard. Grissom, tell the helmsman to set a course after Blacktooth immediately. The refugees can wait. Aye, Captain. The frog-like creature said, making a mock salute with his bulbous fingers, he hopped off out of the hallway. The rest of you, make ready. I'm sure they haven't gone far after taking a hit like that. Dismiss. The group disbanded and Noreen remained a second longer, fuming at the captain's decision. He had completely dismissed the refugees they'd picked up. Can I help you, Noreen, at bronze? She quickly straightened herself. Uh, no, captain. I'll make ready. With that, Noreen left. Nazumi, Nayasha, and Sar continued to stare out of the small porthole of the room. They had breached the atmosphere by this time and were sitting idle. Each of them were weary from the sudden attack earlier in the day, but the intensity of it all kept them from coming down off of the adrenaline high. Noreen re-entered. This time she had some kind of strange food wrapped in an orange leaf. Eat up! Seems the captains decided we're going after Blacktooth. Nazumi instinctively winced at the name. She could still taste the fetid, unkept fingers. You won't need to fight, but as I understand it, you may have some acquaintances held captive? We have extra arms and fresh modular packs for your shielding, should you choose. Nizumi looked at Nyasha, who gave her a nod of approval. We'll fight. Noreen looked up to Sar, who was visibly shaking. I take it you're not up to the task? Sar looked up and attempted to steady himself. I'm more a research and science kind of guy, not so good with weapons. Noreen gave a nod. Come with me. We'll get you to the med bay. You can help out there. You two, hang tight. I'll bring you to the armory once I return. The ship began moving forward, and the dread of meeting the notorious pirate lord hung heavy on both of their hearts. To think we've come so far from home that it all might not exist anymore. While well, Lorene was killed in an instant from those flashing weapons. What if that was one of us? Nyasha, I'm scared. Her Tengu friend held out a hand. We're in this together. Nizumi took it and felt reassured that they would make it regardless of what this new world threw at them. Ready, you two? Come on. They were led through the metal hallways of the ship to a large compartment where a gargantuan man made seemingly of stone greeted them from behind the counter. The counter itself appeared to be affixed to some kind of powerful hollow glass. Grot, get these two some modular packs and some decent arms. None of that broken stuff, all right? The stone man began to laugh heartily. Come on, Noreen. You know I always take care of the newbies. She gave a glare back. Precisely why I said it. He laughed some more before producing cylindrical pods along with two plasma rifles. One very familiar to them as it was on the ship Sar had taken from the hangar. You can familiarize yourselves right over there. Grot pointed to a small room nearby. No worries. It's palladium coated. But you'll use these sim packs so there shouldn't be any worries for that. Noreen fastened the modules replacing the previous ones they had received from Lalareen. They were led across the hall to a room the supply officer had pointed them to. It was unimpressive from the outside, but the second they stepped in it resembled the hollow zoo from before. The room became much larger than it initially appeared. Green grass and fruit trees filled the landscape. Load combat simulation, Noreen said, and the room changed to a rocky landscape where a few crates and multiple static targets were seen. Noreen walked behind a barrier. Load live combat. The static figures turn into a variety of strange races neither of them had ever seen before. Flashes of light began to fly in their direction and they immediately felt the sharp sting as if a wasp had stung them. I'd get to cover if I were you. That grung over there looks pretty mean. Noreen laughed as the two of them fumbled to get behind a crate. There were at least six enemy combatants. They had fire superiority. Nizumi looked down at the plasma rifle and fumbled it from the adrenaline which now spiked throughout her body. Sar said, just pull this right. She did so, and the kick from the weapon pulled it from her hands and hit Nyasha in the face. The Tengu let out a cry of agony from the blow. 
This is a garden variety shit show. You two get your heads in the game. You'll die in a real fight. A hell of light showered and began pouring on them once more as two of the hostiles flanked their position. Even with your shields, the rounds still hurt. I assure you the real thing will be twice as bad as the simulation. Nazumi raised the plasma rifle and leveled it at the frogman who had hopped on top of the crate to gain a visual on them. She pulled the trigger and nailed it between the eyes, where a large hole split the creature's head in two, sending it sprawling back. Nyasha had set down her rifle and started throwing her blades, appealing to her comfort zone. The throw was impressive, and it appeared that it would take down the Bashari-looking creature that had flanked their opposite side. Unfortunately, it bounced off and fell harmlessly to the ground in front of him, as he began firing anew at them. Those primitive weapons won't work on even the most basic of shield modules. Nyasha cursed and quickly took up her weapon anew. She fired and it went a foot shy of the intended target. The lizard laughed and poured on a barrage onto the two of them. His weapon fired rounds in rapid succession and felt like horseflies biting into every area it hit. Nazumi leveled her weapon once more and had gotten the hang of using the small reflex sight built into the top of the weapon. She blew the left portion of the lizard's head clean off, the green blood splattering the crate behind him. Distracted by the enemy, Nazumi felt an arm go around her neck and pulling sensation that unbalanced her. She tried to choke out for help, but found that the simulation was built as real as it gets. She pushed off of a nearby barrier and managed to knock her attacker flat. By this point, Nyasha managed to fire a shot which ripped a hole through the attacker, but also left Nazumi in what she thought must have been the worst pain she had ever experienced in her life. It felt as if the entire right side of her ribcage had been broken. Nyasha pulled her back behind cover and began looking around for the other enemies while Nazumi struggled to regain her posture and breathe. Two left, ladies! Don't screw this up! Nyasha spotted one. It was a cat person. Not quite like Noreen, though. This one was bursting with muscle and it had a large mane of hair extending around its face. He had a much larger looking weapon than the rest of them and it fired an unbelievable amount of projectiles that washed over the barrier she attempted to peek out from. Nazumi had barely gotten her senses back and picked up her weapon. I have an idea, she coughed out. Be ready. She then dived behind another barrier where the frogman had been earlier. She signaled over to Nyasha and then raised the corpse from cover. The cadaver was quickly turned into Swiss cheese, but it gave the opportunity they needed. Nyasha managed to sink around into the chest of the beast. He recoiled back and a second shot hit him in the neck where he collapsed to the ground. A sharp cry turned Nazumi back to Nyasha, who was now lying face down in a pool of blood. A lanky-looking dog creature stood over her. Her legs were very dark and seemingly were transparent as if camouflaged somehow. Nazumi quickly leveled her rifle and began firing. She continued even after blowing the snout right off of her. You bitch! You bitch! The tears were flowing freely and Nazumi dropped and picked up the slack body of her friend. She cried aloud in agony, Please don't leave me here. Don't leave me alone. Simulation ended. Nyasha took in a large gulp of air as everything disappeared and once again they stood in a meadow of green grass. Far from a good performance, but at least one of you survived, Noreen said with a bit of a chuckle. A cacophony of laughter broke out from the doorway, where multiple members of the crew were seen just outside watching the entire onslaught. Initiation. I'm sure you understand. Nazumi could hardly believe it. She never felt so angry before, and her ribs still ached from earlier. She bit hard on her lip and looked away as the crew continued to laugh. All right, that's enough, Noreen said. Those two need more practice before Blacktooth, so bug her off. Still laughing, the crowd began to disperse. The simulator paralyzes whoever dies during simulation. Of course, if your entire team were wiped out, it would end immediately. Noreen spent the next few hours teaching them basic tactics on static targets and familiarizing them with the plasma rifle and phaser pistol. These are two of the most standard weapons you'll see in combat. They are a staple, easy to use and effective enough to kill just about anything. Let's run another simulation. This time I'll be your tag leader. Follow my orders and use the tactics I taught you. This time, eight combatants spawned in. But they were more prepared this time. Nazumi managed to kill three of them, while Naosha managed to kill two. She thought she only managed to get hit twice by the rapid fire of the enemy's rifles. It would be better if you were left untouched, but I'd say you two have really improved. You'll be a great team once we land. I've already cleared it with the captain. Let's run the sim one more time. 
They played through the simulation again. This time, Noreen made a casualty scenario where her leg was hit. Nayasha pulled Noreen to safety while Nazumi provided covering fire. The simulation was a resounding success. Once it ended, they were greeted with a slow clap from Captain Zoroff, who was looking in this time. When the first mate told me she saw these two get decimated, I had my doubts. But from what I just saw, you are more than capable. Welcome to my crew. He handed each of them a black pendant. Put these around your neck. They will identify you as well as signify your membership with the company. One more thing. Bronze Tag Noreen, I hereby promote you to silver. He pulled his tag from underneath his suit and it radiated a bright golden light. He touched it to Noreen's and it turned silver in an instant. Congratulations, Noreen et Silver. Your exemplary skill and instruction to our newest members reflects a credit to yourself and to our organization. Of course this means you'll have a bigger share from the mission. He gave a grin and Noreen stood straight. Her face clenched and her hand shot up to a salute. It, it's an honor, Captain. I won't disappoint you. The four of them stood for a moment, trapped in time. The simulated meadow truly felt like a little slice of paradise. The wind blew softly and the fruit trees swayed along with the greenest of grass. Captain, we're within a parsec of Blacktooth's vessel. Communication is available. Thank you. I'll be right there. Zoroff looked over to them. Why don't you join me? They were led to the top deck where the helm and the main switchboard of the ship was located. Lights of buttons and switches flickered about and four crew members sat behind a large circular desk that encompassed the room. Throw open a line, Selene. She gave a salute, but not before sneering at Noreen, who now wore her silver pendant on the outside of her suit. The Vidalcan flipped the switch and began moving a large dial. Eventually, a screen opened up directly in front of them with Blacktooth along with a large thug standing next to him. Can't stay away from old Blacktooth, huh? How many of you mercs and bounty hunters do I have to kill? Zoroff scoffed. Listen, Blacktooth, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. The choice is yours. You can come back alive and face trial for heinous crimes you've committed, or I can bring your hide in myself. As far as I'm concerned, the result will be the same, and it ends with you being vaporized and erased from history. I think I'll be choosing the hard way, mate. No reason to give up a good thing while it's still going. I see you brought my new plaything and a fortune-breeding friend along with you. A grotesque smile crossed his face, and Izumi felt herself start to shake. Zoroff crossed his arms. This won't end well for you. I hope you're ready. The screen cut off, and Zoroff looked at his new initiates. You ready to take out the trash? She steadied herself, taking in a deep breath. Captain, we're being targeted! An alarm began sounding as the ship began to rock violently. What kind of firepower do they have? Not good, Captain. Looks like the backup engines just took a direct hit. Zoroff's brow furrowed. How did they manage to bypass the shields? It looks like they're using heat rounds, sir. The shields aren't rated for that, and the plating doesn't cover the thrusters. A bead of sweat crossed Zora's face. Damn, no wonder they've been able to evade capture for so long. Get us out of range. Another barrage and the ship began shaking again. I said get us out of here! Selene turned towards him. No can do, Captain. We just lost our last thruster. If we try and jump, we'll end up smack into Cadmus 7. Looks like they're flying towards us. Everyone ready yourself for boarding. They're coming. Selene turned back to her console, which flashed red. Captain, looks like another communication. Patch it through. A smiling black tooth, along with a small crowd just behind him, appeared on the screen. Each of them appeared to be grinning or snarling, brandishing their weapons at the camera. Well, well, well. Looks like we didn't have much of a fight on our hands after all, eh? You ready to see how a pirate works? His smile turned, stretched even further as a large blast was heard, and only a moment later the entire ship began flashing red. Hole breach, hole breach, decompression imminent. They were all thrown to the ground as three quarters of the ship was ripped clean off. Warning, warning, oxygen systems failing, containment system at 80%. Warning. Won't be long now. <laughs> Blacktooth's crew were in an uproar, predators ready to hone in on their prey. He gave one last smile before the screen cut out.
Zorov punched the console as hard as he could, sending a shower of sparks throughout the cabin. His eyes were burning red. I've lost thirty able crew. Thirty friends. There were eight of them now. That's all that was left against impossible odds. Aren't they going to kill us? Selene sat a bit of fear, tracing the confident Vidalkin's voice. They don't need to. We'll be starved for oxygen and helpless within a half hour, and that's being generous. Each of them could already feel the air becoming significantly colder and more difficult to breathe. Try to throw it open a line of communication, Selene. The Vidalkin turned back to the console. They aren't accepting, Captain. Minutes passed by, and eventually each of them fell into a deep sleep as the oxygen reached minimal life-sustaining levels. Nazumi next awoke in a large cell, where Nyasha and Noreen were still unconscious in a pile on top of one another, as if lazily tossed in. Across from her she saw another Tengu, who was huddled in a corner, softly weeping. Next to him was Selene, who had a large gash running the length of her head. They were all stripped to their undergarments, and of course there were no weapons within sight. A small rat passed through the bars freely and scurried down the corridor. A few hours passed and the others began to wake up. Nizumi, Noreen had said, holding the side of her head. I'm guessing it's safe to assume I'm not dead yet. The clacking sound of metal on metal made them all jump. Oh, but you're gonna wish you were. It was Blacktooth. His face twisted in delight. He now wore a purple satin shirt and shorts that flowed freely along with a dark cloak that hung from his back. Oh, welcome home, welcome home. His two fingers that Nazumi had bit off were replaced with metallic-looking filament that he tapped against the bars rhythmically. I'm gonna have all sorts of fun before setting your carcasses off. But then again, maybe I'll just keep you around if you behave. Where are the others, Blacktooth? Noreen interrupted with a false confidence in her voice. Dead, I'm afraid. In a last-ditch effort, Zoroff rigged a bomb. Killed four of my crew, he did. And the remaining stock. Bastard cost me a healthy sum of credits. But at least I still have the two more valuable pieces. He looked over at Nyasha, who was still unconscious. Gonna make me some good profit, I am. Quills, get in here. The frog-like creature noticed a grung hopped in. Blacktooth pointed while he spoke. Have the rat escorted to my compartment. And find the birds a coop. He gave a six mile as he turned and walked off, his cloak dragging behind him. Two more men came, a large lizard and a stone goliath. They didn't stand a chance. Nizumi was easily restrained, even after attempting to shrug off the lizard. Nyasha hung limp and was carried off by the hopping frog across the way. Selim was dragged over and placed with Noreen. She was escorted through the relatively clean halls of the enemy vessel. She wanted to kick and scream, but... She felt as if the situation were hopeless. The lizard man placed a ring around her wrist and it magnetized to a nearby rail. She pulled at it. It wouldn't budge. The lizard gave a chuckle as he turned to leave. The room was well lit by a fireplace off to the far side. There was a large bed next to her, covered in jewels and gemstones. She immediately felt sick as she looked to the ground where an animal skin rug was laid out. It wasn't just any animal. It was easily identified as Aline, their guild mentor, who was missing in this world moments before they arrived. It was all she could bear to see another Wysoki. She had known, skinned, and used as decoration. She lost her stomach to the floor. What other depraved acts must have befell her before being made into a throw rug? After what felt like an eternity, she heard screaming from down the hall. Undoubtedly Nyasha. She cursed at her helplessness. Her eyes had gone long dry by this point, and she screamed so much that she could barely talk. The door slid open, and she felt her heart skip a beat. But it wasn't Blacktooth that entered, but a small fox-like creature whose left eye was missing. It looked as though he had been beaten mercilessly countless times. Listen, stop shifting around. I'm not trying to hurt you. The magnetic lock unclicked and Nazumi was able to move her arms once more. They were numb and weak after losing the majority of her circulation, but they still worked. Take this. You have the best chance. I'll try and distract the rest of the crew when the captain comes. Nizumi wasn't sure how to take this miracle. Oh, who are you? 
The fox looked up at her while handing her a short-handled knife. Your salvation, and hopefully your mind. Press that button in the center. This will pass through any kind of shielding, but it doesn't hold a long charge, so don't drag this out. Your friends managed to contact headquarters. The Kitsune pulled a platinum-colored pendant out of his shirt. This is the best chance we'll ever get. Don't screw this up. He quickly left the room, the door closing behind him. A few minutes passed and the dreaded moment came. A rhythmic tapping was heard on the other side of the door. Little mouse, little mouse, let me in. The door slid open and she quickly positioned herself as if still bound and magnetized to the bar with the knife in her palm. Looks like you left the door unlocked. That's weird, you. But I'm still gonna eat you all up. He let out a chuckle as he looked over with the same smile that twisted her stomach. <laughs> First order of business. Blacktooth reared back and punched Nazumi hard in the face. She felt her vision blur a moment and tasted her own blood. A loud explosion stopped Blacktooth as he reared his arm back once more. What in the hell was that? He turned towards the door and Nazumi seized the opportunity. She lunged forward, driving the heat blade deep into the man's back, directly into the spine. He collapsed to the ground instantly. You deserve much more, Nazumi croaked, her throat still aching. She kicked the corpse hard before grabbing the laser pistol on Blacktooth and walking to the door. The blade had already began sputtering as the power drained from it, but it had served its purpose already. As the door opened, smoke flooded in. The frogman hopped down the hall. Captain, mutiny! There's an uprising! A well-placed laser shot sent him sprawling to the ground in a pool of blood. She searched the body and found the keys to the cells. The smoke hid her well enough. There was shouting and the sound of weapons firing everywhere. She made it to the cells where the body of the other Tengu lie, headless, drenched in blood, and Nyasha was curled into the corner. Selina and Noreen were both awake and immediately ran to the bars as Nazumi entered. Hurry, open the cell! Did you see any more weapons along the way? Noreen said hastily. No weapons. There was a fox person that helped me. Black Tooth is dead. The cell opened and the two of them scrambled out and helped her open the remaining cells. Nyasha looked up at her and then ran to hug Nazumi after realizing it was her friend. She squeezed so tightly she would have swore her ribs had been rebroken. It was horrible. They wanted him to, and he wouldn't, and... Then they just killed him. She was frantic and clearly distressed. Listen, Nyasha, I'm here for you. Blacktooth won't be coming back. We need to focus on surviving. It was difficult telling her friend this, especially knowing what she had most likely gone through. The fox creature appeared at the cell entryway, and Selene ran forward to attack. Nazumi shouted the best she could for her to stop, and she halted inches from her target as he pulled the platinum pendant from his shirt. We're on the same side. Selene dropped her aggressive posture immediately. That platinum, what are you doing here? He left the pendant hanging just outside of his suit. I've infiltrated Blacktooth's crew for eight months now. He isn't easy to get the drop on. Every time I managed to communicate to headquarters, they were either annihilated or too late. Good job, by the way, girl, he said, looking over to Nizumi. Blacktooth's reign of terror has finally come to an end. I've managed to convince a group of pirates to turn in hope of selling off the prisoners for their own wealth. Honestly, I didn't expect it to go this well. Noreen, did headquarters give an ETA? Noreen shook her head. Nyasha had begun shaking violently and stood close to Nazumi. He's... he's the one that killed him. He was there. The Katsuni looked up. Don't be ridiculous, Bird. What do you think would have happened if I didn't blow his head off? Noreen held up a hand, and he stopped. I promise he only did it to save all of us. It's most likely a key component of why this mutiny was able to take place. Nizumi did her best to comfort her friend, but knowing that she was now presumably the last Tengu in the universe carried a very heavy burden. We don't know when help's going to come. I can get us to the armory fairly easily from here, and we can attempt to get out of the stronghold. We can try and find a place to hide, set traps, wait for rescue. We probably won't find any shielding modules or suits, so I don't recommend fighting. Dear listeners, we have reached the end of this episode. Nazumi and Nyasha's ordeals have landed them in the cells of Black Tooth's fortress. Somehow, fate has granted them a second chance. 
Should they follow the Katsune to the armory, attempt escape? He's trustworthy, I think. Although a renegade in his own right. Suggests they find Sanctum and set up traps while waiting for reinforcements. Might work. Attempt to abandon the Katsune and make their own way through the smoke. Let's write a story. Let's play a game. Without the dice.